This Masters Preview Edition of the Sports Game of Podcast brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick for a chance to win 100x in NBA, golf, MLB, NHL, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by the premier arbitrage sports betting tool, AVO. Use their tool to bet both sides and lock in a profit. Access their platform for free at arbsversusodds.com. That's A R B S versus odds.com. Plus, in honor of Masters Week, the Golf Gambling Podcast guys are giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free. Enter at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. This is Jerry Glanville, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? You look like you're ready to dance, Sean. Yes, I am ready to dance. I got my dancing jacket on, aka the Masters jackets that we bought hmm. uh, last year off of uh, somewhere in Taiwan. They feel a little stiff after the trip to the circa, <laughs> and we did, I don't think I, we had them clean since that. So. There was snorkeling involved. Yes, uh, last year we were at the uh, at Circa there doing that, uh, the Masters preview. But uh, hey, speaking of Circa, oh there you go. Yes, me uh, rocking the uh, green jacket, <laughs> no shirt underneath. Great look. Shout out to you, uh, Masters green jacket. Uh, if you guys are in San Diego, you're listening to this uh, stream live, this podcast live over on youtubecom slash sports game of podcast. Still time to uh, get out. We're doing a uh, circuit watch party for Cubs Padres, four o'clock swing social, San Diego, say classy San Diego. Come out. If you're wearing uh, Cubs or Padres gear, free drinks. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, we're going to be heading down after we tape this episode. And of course, sports game on podcast.com slash masters. Get in on the uh, chance to win a tailor made spider X putter. Lo- uh, according to Steve Shermer, this is an amazing putter. Highly recommends it. Says you're going to sink everything if you win this putter. Randomly chosen from people who subscribe to the Golf Gambling Podcast YouTube Sports Gambling Podcast dot com slash Masters. Get in over there. Uh, and last but not least, of course, Underdog Fantasy. Head over there, Underdog Fantasy. Use the promo code SGPN. Get in 100 percent deposit match up to 100 dollars, and they have a ton. Of a uh, fun pick 'em stuff to get involved in with golf. Of course, Tiger Woods right there, higher, lower, round one, Ryan, 70, he's back. 74 strokes. He's not having sex. Uh, Tiger Woods, higher, lower, 74 strokes. We, we haven't had a chance to have the take, but sex good and sex bad. <laughs> Yeah, he's one of those guys I think, who will get I think takes me higher, Sean, so I'll go well, higher. I mean, uh, again, I. Uh, I think the way you get down on Tiger Woods is maybe a first round leader if everything comes together right. But if you're just looking at a higher lower for round one, uh, they also have a spicy ten and a half uh, uh, round one leader position. That's three point two five x. We're gonna have to get the golf gambling Mm. podcast guys on. Uh, Maybe we'll build an underdog entry uh, towards the end there. Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. Joining us from the golf gambling podcast. Mr. Steve Shermer and Boston Capper himself. <laughs> Ryan's already uh, laughing. It's not, he's not even up on the screen, but he's, uh, he's calling in uh, via remote uh, from a, from a vehicle. It appears wearing a nice bright purple oh, shirt. Oh, someone, right. someone's getting into some business. <laughs> we got Dennis <laughs> Capper. Hey, uh, you know, closers wear orchid dress shirts. Uh, what's happening Capper. That's right, baby. See it, man. Just working, trying to uh, make it make it through this miserable day. I got tomorrow off to get ready for the trip of a lifetime, going to Augusta with my boy Steve. It's going to be fucking amazing. I'm so excited. Yes, everybody uh, in Florida knows I'm going. I told everyone. First, 
<laughs> First off, Steve, welcome back on the show. Always enjoy having you on. Uh, secondly, how did the Masters, which have a background check to get tickets, how, oh. did, how did Boston Catholic get cleared <laughs> to access the hallowed sacred grounds of Augusta? What happened? Did you have well, to pull some strings? No, so so we have uh, a connection to a patron down in Augusta, Georgia, Ooh. and his family could not go uh, this year. So it was a similar situation from a couple of years ago. I went with my dad at that point, uh, but my dad, uh, you know, he wanted to stay on the sidelines. He gave me two tickets. He's like, "All right, invite whoever you want." And uh, you know, after some long thought and contemplation, you know, <laughs> I mean, thinking maybe I could just, you know go with the master and invite somebody else and really needle it to my co-host. I didn't ask him, but I felt like it was kind of a perfect <laughs> opportunity to bring Boston Capper uh, to the greatest golf course uh, in America. And uh, it's going to be so exciting. I'm so pumped. Um, it's going to be great going with uh, my co-host and a good friend uh, to Augusta National. Oh, wow. This, this sounds like it's going to be a trip uh, for the memory. Yes. It, Hopefully, experience. hopefully there's a couple moments because uh it feels like there's gonna be memories regardless. <laughs> yeah, That's I right. heard you guys getting all getting all jacked up for your trip. Capper, what's one thing <laughs> on the bucket list you gotta do uh when you get to that course? I mean, I, I wanna watch I mean A Man Corner you have to see. And I wanna sit and do uh dollar bets, uh whether the guys are gonna hit the green or not with Steve. That's uh, that's probably gonna be the uh the favorite favorite part. Is he gonna hit? Is he not? Dollar there, dollar there, like old school at a baseball game. How's the next out going to happen? Yeah. Oh, a little double or nothing. Um, yep. Nothing like finding out how degenerate your buddy is when you get into a little like, all right, we're gonna play a couple bucks on each hole, right? And the next thing you know, you're down three holes. You, <laughs> you want to go? You want to go triple or nothing? You want to go quad? Not, I mean that. Yeah. We used to do that at the baseball field too, and it, what it turns into. Hashtag Dejans only. And I don't. I assume they don't let you just throw peanut shells all over the beautiful <laughs> Augusta grounds, oh, no. but I. That, that's what it turns into eventually throwing peanut shells for dollars. Anyway, so memories. You, you can't, can't use your phone. Going to be locked oh, in, no. get a pimento and cheese. Uh, what's the, no, what's no, the, definitely not. No, no. What are you, what are you going to get no. food wise, drink wise? I mean, I'll drink the beers, the coffee and uh, they, it looks like the chicken sandwich is good. They got a club that looks good. Uh, barbecue sandwich looks good. Pimento cheese is fucking disgusting. It's gross. <laughs> yeah. I think I would have one just cause it's their thing, but I don't know, Steve. What's your what's your food uh, recommendation as a as a Masters veteran? Now, uh, what would you recommend food wise? Well, I mean, the Vendor cheese sandwich is just something you have to have. I mean, everybody talks about it. Just have one. Uh, you know, I, it was tasty going down the first time. The second one, not quite as much. It definitely mm. reaches a shelf life as far as the <laughs> amount of the pimento <laughs> cheese you can have sandwiched between white bread. But you know, honestly, the breakfast option, the uh, the chicken biscuit with a cup of coffee early in the morning when it's nice and cold, that is the go-to right there. Um, that is a really good. Uh, nice way to kick off your morning there. And you start walking around the course, you know, the crisp, cool air. Uh, that's my recommendation. Definitely the chicken biscuit for breakfast. Yeah, I, I would say that um, if you've not spent time in the South, biscuits, they can do really well. Oh, yeah. But biscuits, yes. e e easily one of the things they can do. And fried chicken. Maybe not the cheese. I don't, I don't know. I haven't had uh, too much cheese, too. You're walking around, your stomach's moving <laughs> stuff. You don't want to end up with any sort of roadblock situation. <laughs> no, you want to be fired on all cylinders. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk. Let's talk Masters. We're here. You guys are going to be. I do it before we get started. I do have a question. Are we? Are they restricting you from standing in areas too close to trees? I assume because it's so risky to stand near the near tree. I'm, I'm making the joke that everyone's making, but I was reminded from our social feed this morning that a tree did yeah. fall. At the Masters Lash, any adjustments? Uh, will there be straps from the trees, reinforcements maybe? So funny enough, uh, yeah. intel on the course is that there's been uh, a little bit of lumber work done on hole 15, <laughs> uh, removing some uh, delinquent trees, uh, to put it. So, uh, you know, listen, everything has to be perfectly manicured and everything has to be as good as it can be in Augusta National and killing patrons with pine trees probably is not in the cards to make everybody have a good time. So uh, whatever they got to do to make everybody safe, that was wild last year that happened. It was the video from that was unbelievable. I can't believe no one got hurt. There's so many people around where that was and that nobody got hurt from it is just, it's a miracle. Well, if you find a certain part of the internet, um, it, no one got hurt because it was obviously a staged event. 
Oh wow! Yeah, Do rating, you even have conspiracy drug. theories? Oh, oh, of course. I mean, think <laughs> about it. I mean, the I, tree was a crisis actor, right? I, I don't know if you have you looked into this security guard of Michael Jackson, but he was uh, involved <laughs> in the lumber industry in in Augusta, Sean. So the truth is, you out connect there. the dots. Uh, so wait, what what days are you guys actually going to be watching? Thursday, Friday, like the whole four days, or what, what days are you uh, going to be going to be out on the course? Capper, you want to go? Friday, Saturday. Friday, yeah. Saturday. Okay. So now Friday, getting Saturday. that fir- getting that first day of Thursday. Steve, how is the uh, you know always on top of the uh, arg- ergonomy or how we pronounce oh, what? it? Oh no, people are going to be very upset with you. Uh, always it's a, a serious sign. Always on top of the grass <laughs> and and the weather. What are we looking at weather wise for the Masters? Are we going to have any issues? Well, so the last couple of years, it's uh, the weather has definitely put a damper on things. It has not been very good weather. You know, two couple of years ago, it was really cold and windy. I was there, and it was just, it was just so freezing. Even the guy from Rochester, New York, it was fifty degrees and cold, and I, you know, I couldn't handle it. Last year, you had the big rain delay on Saturday that pushed everything to Sunday, and this year, coming into the Masters, it's been sunny. It's been great. The temp, you know, the golf course is firm, but a cold front is coming through on mm. Thursday. And it's supposedly going to rain all day. And I would be very surprised if we get much golf. We're definitely not getting golf in the morning. Um, maybe a little bit towards the afternoon. But what that's going to do is it's going to push all the tea heads back to Friday. And after this cold front comes through, it's literally going to be the toughest weather conditions you can play at Augusta National. And there's a couple of things that come into play as far as how tough it is. It's wind direction, wind speed, temperature, and humidity. We're going to have low humidity. We're going to have 30 mile per hour gusts. It's going to come from the west, which is the hardest wind to play with Augusta National. And temperatures aren't going to get past 70 degrees. It's going to be really tough. Uh, average scores usually is about plus two or more on those types of days. I would expect mm. some car crashes, some really tough scoring conditions, mm. a lot of tough sledding for uh, the guys that have to get out to a good start if they really want to win the Masters. Uh, I, I was looking at the weather. It does seem like it's going to be shit weather on Thursday, but then four straight days of niceness. So maybe we get a uh, maybe we get a sweet uh, Monday finish at the Masters. Little little bonus, uh, stay home from school. Yeah, a little, extra, little extra golf. Can't complain about that. Uh, all right, let's start start at the top. I mean, Scotty Scheffler coming in like a machine. Uh, I mean, this is crazy. These are almost Tiger Woods prime number. They're hanging on him. I mean, right now he's plus four fifty to win the tournament. Uh, Capper is is it just Scotty Scheff? Uh, is it just Scheffler's tournament to lose right now? I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess you can put it that way. I, so I guess I would. Casual golf betters who don't grind every week, right? Like the new guys coming in who get excited. Um, I heard somebody else say this, like who get excited to hit like a four to one palais. Like that's not a bad bet then. If you don't bet golf every week, like and you get excited about four to one, then fine. But that that's the part of oh, we got <laughs> All right. We're losing cap. All right, four to one. Uh, we're gonna get <laughs> we're gonna right, get Capper's Cap, internet yeah. connection figured out. Steve, uh Scotty Scheffler, what are we thinking? Four to plus four fifty, that's crazy. I'm not I I mean, maybe put him in DFS, maybe play some stuff for him, but one, it's really hard to win back to back. And then two, I, I just it's but just nothing good, interesting though. about that. He's price. really good though, uh Sean. Well, uh, first, props to my co-host for reporting on the front lines in Ukraine right now. You know, he's uh, very brave for doing well, that. But um, hey, look, Florida, a lot of similarities. <laughs> there is. Uh, look, I mean, with Scotty Shuffer right now, he's literally doing everything you need to do well at Augusta National and at an elite level. He has great driving, great long iron play, excellent around the green. And the big difference with him lately is that putter that we showed. Uh, earlier in the show that that has really turned things around for the last year or so. It just seems like it's been really bad uh, with the putter, you know, and that's submarine in, in tournaments, but last couple, at least he's doing a little better, uh, gained a lot of strokes putting at uh, API, the Arnold Palmer ends up winning there gains a little bit at the player's championship but still just because he hit the ball so well, that was enough for him to still win. And uh, you know, he put overall pretty well at the Houston open too. So it's really going to come down to that. Uh, is Scotty Shepard going to continue 
uh, with his putting hot streak. If it is, this one is already over before it started. I would probably think that in easier scoring conditions that we'd have a little bit more of a diverse leaderboard as far as guys who can actually get birdies and can keep up with Scotty. But it looks like at least for the first couple of days, really tough ball striking conditions. And just that's going to give a guy like Scotty Scheffler an advantage because it's not going to be a putting contest at that point. It's going to be an up and down game, solid consistency. And he just doesn't miss. It's absolutely terrifying if you're holding an outright against him uh, down the stretch, because you know, he's going to stick to 15 feet and it just is very nerve wracking. So you know, at this point, it's really going to be a decision for you. Do you want to bet Scotty Sheffer plus 450? Five to, I've seen five to one even on some books possibly, um, or just go down the card. It's 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 a yes or no decision uh, for your outrights this week. But no. no. Uh, it's like a 12-point dog on a Sunday, Sean. How you feeling? <laughs> Yeah, no way I'm betting Scotty Scheffler. Come on, I'm here to I'm here to hit some hundred to ones. I'm here to have fun. Do you all right? Know. So will the crowd so uh, when Tiger was at his heyday, everyone was very clearly pro Tiger. And like the crowd wanted to see Tiger smash the field. I it doesn't I don't get the same sense with Scotty Scheffler. Maybe that's the difference. He he almost feels more like a heel. He's like a doughy giant who happens to be <laughs> fucking incredible at, at golf. Uh, I, I would imagine will will the will the Augusta crowd be behind him if he's smashing the field? Well, I mean, they're you know the Augusta crowd is usually very polite to everybody, <laughs> so you know they'll cheer him if he does something well. But the true roars go to guys like Jordan Spieth and Tiger still and Rory, even Justin Thomas a little bit. He has he's a very mainstream golfer. Uh, the problem with Scotty though is you know he just kind of a ordinary guy that he doesn't really get too high or low off the course or on the course. He's, you know, he's very, you know, not very showy at all. He's just a great golfer. And that's not, unfortunately, not very marketable for the PJ Tour. And I think that's why these guys, you know, the PJ Tour has had a problem post tiger really trying to get popular and marketing guys is because most of these guys just don't really have a great personality. And Scotty doesn't really have that. He just kind of goes about his business, keeps his head down and just wins. Uh, and you know, that might be great for uh, oh, record man. books, but it's not very good for the, uh, the social media impressions. No, uh -oh. come on. You gotta, you gotta have your wife try and kill you with a golf club. Uh, yeah. Then then we're invested. Uh, Scotty <laughs> live a little. Uh, what about you mentioned uh, on some of the other like big names, Rory, of course he needs the masters to check off his, you know, to, to kind of complete the grand slam. Where are you at with uh, Rory coming into this week? Definitely a lot higher than what I was coming into last week. Rory had been very inconsistent. Uh, for most of the year, ever since he got back from the Middle East after he won over there, the uh, it was a couple problems. The iron play wasn't very good, and around the green it wasn't as good as what it usually is for him. And it seems like the last couple tournaments, he has gained a little bit more consistency with the irons. He uh, scrambled relatively okay at the Valero Texas Open. So things that you need to be, you know, uh, peaking with coming into Augusta National, he's starting to do well. You know, again, it just it comes down to will Rory McIlroy play smart? Sometimes he makes some pretty boneheaded decisions at the wrong time at Augusta National. And that's the one thing, like, you know, you got to keep, you got you to play Augusta National very smart. <clears throat> and he's made some questionable decisions that's really cost him. And it's going to come down to, see, like, you know, can he handle the pressure? He's going for the career grand slam. Um, me personally, um, you know, I mean, I was hoping his odds would maybe drift. Maybe he wouldn't be all that popular, but it seems like they're firmly planted about 10 to 1, 11 to 1, 12 to 1 at this point. Um, you know, he could be there for a positional, but for me, for outright, probably not getting there. But, you know, I it's it's Roy McIlroy. He does very well at the Gusta National. Him being not really in the mix, but kind of, you know, on the front page of the leaderboard at the end of the day, wouldn't shock can, me. Can we check, can check in with uh, Colby for this one? Because there's no... <laughs> Rory, no, 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 after no. that head doctor situation last year, Rory, it I, seems returning like, to the scene of the crime. yeah, it seems like a mental thing with Rory. No. Even though his swing can be in great shape, I just think there's something, there's some mental blockage going on with him. I don't see him uh, donning these sweet, sweet green jackets <laughs> uh, that, I, that Kramer and I are rocking in studio. Uh, Capper, do yes. we like uh, do we like Rory at all this uh, this week? Never Rory, ever, never ever Rory, <laughs> never. System. He's a long Irish mental head case. You're right. Like I, last year, I, when I found that out, I think it was I found out right before we came on the mothership yes. show. And I was freaking out. I was like, "There's no fucking way that he can win." He's that concerned. <laughs> he needs to bring a psychiatrist with him to a golf course. So I'm out. That being said, he is in terrifyingly good form, uh, and nobody's picking him. He's numbers fading, so that is uh, that is kind of scary. But I'm not going to bet on that nine or ten. We already got a question in the chat uh, from Moonoff, the machine Manji for Steve. 
Steve, would you rather play? Would you rather have a Scotty Scheffler outright at like four or five to one there, or top five at plus one hundred five? Plus one hundred five. In in some weird way, I see Scheffler hanging around, um, but the the not the what it takes to win back to back. I think ultimately is why I would be scared to take him at that price. But what are your thoughts on him as like a top five bet? I would at, at plus one hundred five. I'd rather just do the outright at that point because if, mm. if it's top five, he's going to be in the mix. So I'd rather have five to one. He's actually going to close on Sunday. And plus that could get dead heated. Yeah. I mean, like that, that could go wrong for you in a couple ways. If it's just plus one Oh five for a top five. And I, you know, I mean, if you want to cover your bets potentially with that, uh, with your outrights, that could go double wrong for you. If Scotty would finish like seventh or so, I'd rather just, you know, bet from five to one instead of getting pretty crappy odds for that top five. That was uh Steve politely calling moon off a pussy yeah, for yeah. not taking <laughs> Come on, just go for the go for the outright. Uh Capper, are you in on uh Scotty Scheffler uh, this week? No, I, I can't. Like I'm sure Steve uh said it already. Like it's it's four to one for such a short number for a golfer. I mean golf is so yeah. volatile. Um his putter goes sideways, he's you know, anything can happen and four to one the juice is not worth the squeeze, but there's many good golfers uh in it. Now, that being said, there's probably ten guys who go in and that's it. So uh four to one I guess isn't that terrible at odds, but I'm still not Mm, that's that's like maybe a thirteen point dog on a Sunday. Kramer's, yeah. Kramer's his he's just gonna be Max betting Scotty Scheffler. Uh, no, no, give actually, me the chalk. I I uh and you'll you'll see with my DFS lineup. I yeah I went I didn't go to the ceiling. I didn't go. Uh, I went more in the the it middle air. I, I yeah I think you got to fade Scotty. Sche- I mean if you're not fading Scotty Scheffler, you're you're uh, rooting against chaos. And I'm a well, fan of chaos. I, I think especially DFS, and we'll get into it when we do our DFS idol. I think if you have Scotty Scheffler in there, you have to get everything else. So, I found it very hard to construct a lineup. So, with well, you have to get everything else. You I mean obviously if you're winning the million maker, you get everything right. But like. You have to get you put so much pressure on the rest of the lineup. Actually, my my model has Scotty priced at fourteen four. <laughs> the, for, they love saying fourteen point four k. Yes, fourteen thousand four hundred. <laughs> Say it like a man. Uh, Steve, I read your Masters preview. Always enjoy, and I always forget about it every year. But the nugget of guys playing their third, seventh, and ninth <laughs> Masters. Re- like walk us through those guys. Um, third master, Cam Young, Wills Altoris, Min Wu Lee, Sam Burns, seventh master, Xander, Tony Finau, Corey Connors, ninth master, Brooks, Justin Thomas, Shane Lowry. So what is it about three, seven, and nine you think uh is the magic number for these guys as far as times they've played Augusta? You know, I mean, it's just historical patterns. I don't think it's really just, it's just what guys tend to do around with more experience. You know, the more times you play Augusta national, you end up learning its intricacies where, and more importantly, where you can actually miss it. That's the big key is, you know, if you're in a bad position, if you know, you can get to a certain spot where, you know, you can get up and down, you know, saving a bunch of strokes, that's all coming with course experience. And you need to do that a couple times through. And, you know, there's just been studies done that apparently just around your third, seventh and ninth masters, it seems like your expected strokes gained historically tends to go up. The last couple of years, actually, we saw this play out. Scotty Scheffler in 2022 yeah. was playing his third masters. He ends up winning. John Rahm last year played his seventh masters. Ends up winning. A couple of years ago, Hideki Matsuyama, 10th Masters, but around that ninth level jump, you know, between about like nine and 12 Masters, that's when you're absolutely at your apex. You know the course. If you're playing well, you're expected to do well. So it's important to kind of look and see, like, you know, where these guys are coming in as far as their number of appearances uh, at Augusta National. And, you know, I, last year uh, that paid out well for uh, uh, my co host here. I told him this was John Rahm's seventh Masters, and he hammered that and he ended up working <laughs> out for him. So, you know, listen, if you just want to go on that simple trend, Maybe look at a couple of those guys around uh, those appearances and, you know, see what happens. Feels like a little, like a game of three card Monty. <laughs> it's just like, well, wait, how does three, this work? seven, nine. Can't miss. You're like, no, no, no. Trust me. Trust me. Well, uh, Brooks is one of the guys making his ninth masters mm. appearance. Of course, uh, what debacle in live Miami. Uh, Capper, you look like a guy who was just coming from a nightclub in Miami. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> What uh? What do you think about Brooksy uh, this this week? So I bet him last week at twenty to one, thinking his number would go down because it looked, especially after I actually did it after round one in Miami where it looked okay. Uh, after texting back and forth about the impending doom and why Brooks looked like shit, I cashed out of that bet. But then me and Steve talked again last night. I bought back in this morning. 
Uh, I am I am back and forth, back and forth. It's just Steve Steve gave me all the tidbits. The, the narrative is that he only plays well in majors when he plays well the week before. Steve debunked that very quickly, uh, and so I was immediately back in on it. And look, there are only really so many guys who can win majors, and Brooks is a stone cold killer. Uh, he's like the opposite of ninety percent of these golfers, right? Just just country club pussies, basically. This is the only way I can describe it. And then they can't they, they can't close you know what i mean they have they don't have that edge to him you know brooks as much of a frat bro as he is he didn't come up that way he played baseball he had to go over to europe uh to try to earn his card he's got a chip on his shoulder because he wasn't one of these country club little bitches he played like real sports growing up you know what i mean <laughs> I, I appreciate the way that Caffer just shit on golfers. That was yeah. It was well, classy. He's, he's, I like uh, I like the <laughs> idea of Brooks Brooks Kepka as a lunch pail guy going to work there, yep. grinding it out. Uh, Steve, your take on uh, Kepka this week? Yeah, I mean, so it's just kind of expanding what I talked about with uh, with Boston Capper. So I, I think a big reason why people think about oh well, Kepka, you know, playing well before the week before a Masters, he ends up or week before a major ends up winning. I mean, it's happened a couple of times. You know, last year he won uh, in or live Orlando, ends up playing, you know, going second uh, the next week at the Masters. A couple of years ago, when he won Beth Page Black, he ended up doing really well in that final round at Byron Nelson. And even though there's nothing really about the Byron Nelson to translate the Beth Page, but the fact we saw him play really well and start hitting the ball great and they're translating the following week. But you know, there are plenty of examples of. Brooks just completely botching things uh, and still doing well. The next week. you know, most famously, I think he was horrible uh, at again the Byron Nelson before the 2021 PGA, and everybody count him up. I think he drifted to like 40 or 45 to one. It was just really bad, and then he ended up coming out on fire on Thursday. Ends up in the final group. Didn't work out for him that day, but he's still in the mix at that point. So, you know, I mean, I, I was originally concerned about. Brooks coming in. He's been kind of hovering under the radar a little bit with Liv. I've been doing a little bit of uh, uh, digging into some of the stats with Liv uh, throughout the year. And he's been hitting the ball solid for the most part. It's been a lot of issues with the putter. Uh, and what I saw on Friday, at least, at, at Durrell, a very tough golf course, is you know he screwed up the opening hole. He got a bogey, but no bogeys the rest of the round there. Four birdies. Ends up kind of getting in the mix. And then Saturday, Sunday, I don't know what happened. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't. It's, it's hard to get into the mind of Brooks Kepka. Maybe he just saw at that point that Doral was very punishing and brutal to everybody else the rest of the weekend. Maybe he knew that he had it uh, on Friday and just kind of took his foot off the gas and maybe he's trying to rope a dope uh, people a little bit. So I'm still in on Brooks, uh, mostly because I just don't really have any other ideas with outrights. I went back and forth on a bunch of other guys, but kind of look what my co-host said with tough wind, con you know, tough wind conditions. Just some of these guys are soft. And like it, it, it makes it very challenging to put them, even though they look good in the stats category, you put them in the bet queue and you, you know, put your finger over the bat. It's like, do I really want to back this guy? And I just yeah. kept going back to Brooks at this point, And I'd end up just betting him uh, on my card this week. I would have liked to see him miss the cut in Miami. Show show uh, Liv how much he doesn't give a shit about that tournament. <laughs> well, you, you technically can't. Yeah, can't cut. do that. Yeah. That's, that's Wait, why they're so not getting world ranking points. Uh, There's no cut. So who, what, all right. So then um, I don't want to tease my, my team, but what, uh, what happened to uh, Cam Smith at the live? So uh, oh, he just withdrew. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So he said, I really don't give a fuck. I'm out of here. So allegedly he had food poisoning. Allegedly. <laughs> now he was playing like garbage up until that point. He's been hitting the ball pretty garbage for most of the year, but it was food poisoning. So I don't know. Oh, I'll take it. Right I respect that questionable food poisoning. I gotta take it's like Lamar sometimes you gotta take a shit <laughs> uh capper uh Tiger Woods abstaining from sex until oh, the Masters yeah. do you think that will help his performance hurt his performance is there any Tiger bets you <laughs> like this week no nah, so I don't do the Tiger bets because I don't I always go on the on the bad side and it's no fun to root against Tiger right he's kind of like the asshole at the bottom um, so yeah, and I think it's probably good for him, right? I mean, it, it got him into uh, all types of trouble, uh, cost him a shit ton of money. And, uh, you know, the old coaches say, you get you no know, sex keeps your legs, man. So he needs, uh, he needs all, uh, all the strength he needs to walk around that place. Yeah. You do need your legs there for masters. Uh, we got it. 
are we can we get a pedometer on you guys i know they i know you can't do uh the phone but i i would like to get some side bets over under steps uh you guys log on friday saturday oh man like an air tag yeah just get their location <laughs> cap, like some trackers little capper tracker <laughs> well and, uh, I, well, i'm well, at well, amen amen <laughs> corner eh. Well, that's not a fair fight because I got long legs and my co has short oh, yes. legs. So, oh, you know, sure. or keep up with me, he's going to log technically more <laughs> steps than I do. Yeah, know, his so. steps will be through uh, the I roof. Might, right? I might have to get a little bit of a handicap on that one. <laughs> Another classy dig. Very classy dig yeah. on Capper there. Yeah, I would. So, what's the plan? So, where, I mean, you've been there before, Steve, but do you guys have a, a plan for where you're going to try to squeeze your asses into the situation? <laughs> Well, I mean, so so when I went there a couple of years ago, I ended up parking behind the second green, and that's a really good central location to be. You can watch guys play down the hill to two. You see them team off on three. You turn around and see them play the seventh green, and you see them team off on eight, and there's a concession there. There's a bathroom as well. Uh, it's not very far from the merchandise tent or the clubhouse if you want to just go back mm. up the hill there. It's very easily accessible to get back there. You know, I, so, you know, I might start you out there, but uh, one of the things I think uh, Boston Capper wanted to do is uh, uh, I am going on a little bit of a walkabout uh, just walking around Augusta National, going to parts of the property where there was no play going on, and just walking the golf course, getting up close to the green, just not having anything really going on. And honestly, it was one of the best things that I ever done. Uh, you know, just you know, it's it's not often you can just go walk one of the greatest golf courses in the world without anybody there. And I, you know, he seemed like he wanted to have interest in doing that, so we'll probably end up doing that at some point uh, during the week. Oh, the walkabout. I, the walk about. Is, uh, a uh, long romantic walk on <laughs> an empty golf course. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So we're going to need. I don't know. Can you guys take a photo? Yeah, right? I was going to say, I've, I'm seeing a picture of like two two people <laughs> holding hands as they walk off into the sunset on like a It's fairway. like those, you know, the engagement photos. <laughs> Which yeah. is beautiful Augusta painting. We said yes to Augusta. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I mean, just as like a course, it's got to be just so awesome. Any chance we can get one of you guys to yell out a "Let it ride" during someone's backswing? I know, I know, I know. Steve's like, no, 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 no. Oh, you Capper, we got to. You got to be careful. I, I can't, I, I can't misbehave either. These are somebody else's tickets. Yeah, yeah. So, that, uh, that's. The, yeah. You, you got to understand how serious this is. I, Steve I, won't even allow a joking I, about this. I knew a, per, I, I knew someone that lived in Augusta, which, by the way. Much nicer on the inside of the gate, Sean. Just I, I don't yeah. want Capper to have any expectations. But no, I, I don't forget I lived in Georgia. I'm aware of what Augusta's like. They are great. very. They call it Disgusta. That's what yeah. other people call it, not me. Other people. But that uh, I would say that uh, they were very serious. Like even the people on the outside who clearly uh, weren't living on the same level as the people on the inside. Oh, like, you don't you don't say that about. Uh, <laughs> I I can't. Basically, I came back being like, well, what a crock of shit. I drove around the whole place, couldn't even peek, a, get a peek inside. This is bullshit. And I got scolded. That's the way it is inside the castle walls. Yeah, yeah. So so when I was there a couple of years ago, there was a couple teenagers, probably some you know hedge fund managers, kids. Uh, right by the 18th green there. And they're talking a little loud and a green jacket came over and tapped it on the shore and said, you guys need to keep it down or you're out of here. You know, they, they really keep things on a very tight leash. So, you know, listen, as much, I would love to do ambush marketing for you guys uh, at Augusta national. Unfortunately, these are not my badges and uh, I, I don't want to be the reason why they're revoked, uh, but we'll start, we'll see what we can do for, uh, for the network in order to get I like that. All right. Steve saying, get the fuck off my porch with this kind of this is the master show. Uh, you know, maybe just leave a couple this, uh, this couple is, of the business cards laying around. You this know? isn't the waste <laughs> management, please. Yeah, we, we we have golf gambling coasters. So yeah. we were I, I was gonna throw them around Augusta for us. So oh, hell we'll yeah. definitely Let's do go. that. Get a little pimented cheese on them, you know. Yo, oh, that would be uh yeah. <laughs> a little pimento cheese coaster. Uh, so any any tiger thoughts, uh, Steve, and then we'll hop into some DFS idol. You know, I mean, while my co-host likes to be the good guy, I tend to be the bad guy with Tiger, and I tell him, you know, I, I tell him, you know, I play it, you know, I call it how it is with him. And I, there was a prop earlier. Unfortunately, it moved, uh, but uh, you know, they they set the over under on round one birdies for him at three and a half, and it was minus one fifteen both ways. And regardless of if they play on Thursday or not, the round one will be completed by the end of Friday in the toughest, like I said, toughest weather conditions imaginable. And the reason why the West winds are so difficult is because, you know, a couple of the par fives no longer are reachable in two. So that takes away a couple of birdie opportunities and it's going to be cold. You know, and Tiger, I feel like, you know, he, you know, with the cut streak with him, 
I think that's the most important thing. I think he's going to play very conservative to make mm. sure he makes it to the weekend. I do, I expect a lot of pars, a lot of grinding. So I hammered under three and a half birdies in round one for him. And then it moved significantly to minus 170 at that point. And now it's out to two and a half birdies. So, which I think is actually oh, probably wow. a fair line. But uh, you know, if you can find mm. stuff like that, that might be fine. But as far as like making the weekend, it's not difficult to make the cut at Augusta. You really only got to be about 35 guys. It's top 50 in ties. And there's only about 90 guys in the field. And there's a couple, there's some dead money in the field already. And, you know, if, if I expect the cut to be around plus three or plus four. And if Tiger just plays really conservative, plots around, he knows the golf course better than anybody that's obtainable for him. Uh, but other than that, I don't really have high expectations uh, for him this week. Uh, you know, he's only been play- he's only played 19 competitive rounds since the pandemic, you know, to put it. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, he doesn't it cold. Uh, <laughs> he's got, he's got all it's these injuries. The legs, he's yeah. swollen. I mean, I know what it feels like to wake up in the cold. I, I can't imagine after playing around and it's, you got the humidity angle too Thursday. Mm. Like that's going to cause some, some swollen joints. I I'm predicting bad. I, I love Tiger. Don't get me wrong. Um, n- not this week. I, you know, I, I will say though, no, I, the no, first no. version of my lineup I was building, I, I, I get to the end and it's like sixty eight hundred dollars. Let me scroll down. Tiger Woods. Fuck, it's a sign. Wow. It's a, no, I can't do this. Walk away. All right, we're gonna get to a DFS idol before we do that. Shout out to Avo. That's right, Avo. Proud to partner up with Avo, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. Uh, if you're new to arbitrage sports betting, very simple. Basically, you're betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit. The Avo tool scans the sports books looking for discrepancies in odds and tells you how much money you need to place with each sports book and the expected profit. This uh this tool is great because it's super fast and obviously uh, with something like arbitrage betting, you need uh you need it to be very fast so that you can hop in. Get uh, both lines. You know the example we got is, hey, let's say you got one side plus one forty, minus one hundred five on the other side. You play both of those, you can lock in a profit. And again, lightning fast. That's a huge part of it. They even have um, some live arbitrage opportunities. And again, obviously with live speed matters even more. So super fast tool. Best part about it is right now, uh, while in beta, it is completely free. That's right. Avo is currently free to use without restrictions. So why would you not uh, sign up? Give it a shot tool around with it. Uh, I think again, if you're grinding it out uh, and you're looking to lock in some profits, uh, Avo is certainly the way to go. And again, it's completely free. Get started today at arbs versus odds. That's a R B S V S odds.com. Arbs versus odds.com. Kramer, time for everyone's favorite DFS idol. You're up first. What do you got, Kramer? Oh, all right. So I, I, you guys were talking about Brooks earlier, and it almost, I, I don't have Brooks in the lineup. I was scrambling to try to get Brooks in the lineup, but I wanted to, every, these live guys, they're not taking golf seriously. I want to shake my fist at them. So I'm not invest I'm I'm kind of investing in one live guy later, but um it sorry, it, it didn't fit the narrative. So I didn't go with Brooks. I hope he doesn't make me regret it. Um, because as Capper said, he played real sports growing up. Uh my first guy, ninety nine hundred. Ooh. Sean, you wouldn't believe it. But and I, I I worry that he might be considered uh, quote soft by the judges. But he's got three top tens in the past five Masters, including a runner up in 2019, a third place in 2021, and is finished in the top ten of in six of eight starts this year. His name starts with an X, Sean. It's Xander Schauffele. Let's go. All right, 9900. My lineup is stacked with uh meat and filler. Is Xander soft and do you love my pick, Steve? You know, I go back and forth on if Xander is soft. Um, you know, there are examples of Xander coming through in windy conditions. He won the Scottish Open a couple of years ago in really oh, firm and windy conditions. Good. Uh ended up holding out Saeed the Gala in a windy final round. A little shaky toward the backstretch, but you know, he ended up holding on uh in a windy final round. But 
there also are times when the weather just gets kind of rough for him and he ends up just wilting. I, I think people think he's soft because of what happens in the final round. And that's the prevailing narrative about Xander right now is that he can't close. We saw what happened at the Players' Championship. You know, two critical bogeys down the stretch and missed a short putt on 17. Uh, could not close at, at Riviera. He was pretty bad until the back nine when he was out of it. And then all the pressure was up. But, you know, as far as his skill sets and what he's doing, uh, everything checks out with him. Uh, you know, he mentioned in his press conference today that he's hired a physio to get him stronger, to hit the ball a little farther. He's a great long iron player around the green. He's great as well. Putts really well with Augusta. He has a bunch of good finishes there. Uh, pr- might be the most popular pick on the board this oh. week in DFS. So you'll have yes. to differentiate it a little bit. But, you know, I mean, the form for Xander coming in is pretty good. It's just really good question of, like, are we going to get Mr. Hyde or Jekyll with him in the win? capper yeah he's, he's right he's probably gonna be the most popular uh player on the board right he opened up at even on the betting side he opened up close to 20 depending on where you're getting that and he steamed all the way down to 13 12 and a half in some spots everybody loves xander for listening every reason why you like him right he's good in everything that steve said great course history here this is a, probably a course with the stickiest course history uh but it doesn't matter if he's chalk because chalk in dfs uh, typically hits at augusta because we know what this course is. We know the player profiles, you know, for the most part, we have a pretty decent idea on how the tourney is going to go. Now we don't know who's going to win, obviously, but we know the player profiles and the stat models to take a look at and see who's going to do well with the course history too. Uh, play that buzzer one more time, Sean, cause you're wrong. Chalk hits at the masters. That's what, uh, that's what, uh, Capper so said. That's a Danny Willett. I, I will say, I also, I recently watched an interview with Xander, uh, with Dan Rappaport from foreplay and, uh, in general, um, I was kind of interested in, uh, his interviews in general, but, uh, it kind of made me like Xander. So I, I gotta be honest. I, I liked Xander's approach on, uh, talking and speaking to the public and his opinions. I'm a Xander guy now, even though you it's not Nagels. a real name. Even though it's not a real name, I, yeah. N- Nagel's uh, also now that we're friends again because Saquon's <laughs> off the team, he's also maybe swaying me. All right, you're up, Sean. Well, I, we, that, that felt positive. Yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you a partial. I felt card. positive. They said it's it was positive until positive. you talk about why. Like, we'll with that. <laughs> okay. Well, I I I think it's positive also that everyone is copying me and he's the most player popular player this week. I'm gonna go. We already talked about this guy, but a working class hero. You know him. You love him. He played a bunch of other sports in high school, <laughs> and uh, again, coming off a second place finish. He uh, not his first second place finish. Also got a second place finish in 2019. It is also his ninth Masters, aka his time to shine. Ready to put live golf on the map. Oh, Give me it. Brooks Kepka at 10.2. Steve, oh stop. You it. like Brooks as a uh, DFS play? You know, I mean, what's his ownership hovering at right now? I mean, it's it's still a little high just because you know it's Brooks hmm. Kepka, but. I mean, I already gave the spiel for him. I just am going to go on mm. blind faith that he's going to be able to turn it on uh, mm. at the Masters. I think another thing going for him, too, is because of the weather the first couple of days, it's really tough. Brooks tends to go into a mindset of a major saying, okay, I can eliminate half the field because they're not mentally tough, and I just got to beat you know a handful of guys, and he can do that. And, I, and I, true, I do truly think at this point in Brooks's career, now that he proved himself last year, he can win a major championship. The green jacket's all that matters to him. It's That's the last great pelt. Uh, to get in the trophy case for him. And, and the window was closing on Brooks with his injury history, with his age. There's a sense of urgency to get it done. You know, I, you know, maybe this is the time for him uh, this year. Uh, uh, Capper, uh, Capper, really seems well. like you're in on Brooks this year. Or this yeah, I am. And I don't think he's going to get the ownership that uh, that he's projected to. I think mm. he's going to eventually get squeezed. Um, him and Ron, I think the ownership's probably going to drop a little bit. Um, yeah, and like Steve said, man, he's somebody who I trust in a lot of somebody who I trust in big spots to make those putts. And just gotta gotta hope that live Miami, maybe he uh maybe just hit South Beach a little too hard on Friday night. <laughs> well, th- that is a possibility. Yeah. Well, it's not Dustin Johnson, but yeah, uh maybe and, that was his issue. And he didn't get the shits and withdraw from the Miami event. <laughs> no so food I, poisoning. Uh, you get a lot of seafood down in Miami. You never know what, what you can get there. Kramer. What do you got? All right, I'm sticking with guys who are hot. Yes, on the course. Okay, uh, Sean, you've once, and I'm a little worried, uh, but I think his injury issues have gone away because otherwise the cold weather back uh, situation. But uh, like I mentioned, hot on the course, nine point zero k to speak in your language. 
Uh, and since he won at Riviera in February, Sean. Okay. Absolute heater for my guy, Hideki Matsuyama. We're talking tied for 12th at the Arnold Palmer, tied for six at the players. You love the players, Sean. And the Valero open, tied for seventh. He's an elite scrambler. He's my I, again had to stick in the in the meat of these uh, guys here. Didn't go high, didn't go low. Hideki Ma Ma Matsuyama almost fucked up his name like you, Sean. From uh, hailing from Japan, coming back to win another Masters. Steve, did I do it right? I mean, I, I definitely like Hideki's form coming in. That's a good profile. Obviously, mm -hmm. you just mentioned the ball strike is very good. Great performances this year. You know, last couple of years has been nagged by a neck injury. It's really sapped his power off the tee, driving it a whole lot better now. Uh, it seems like he's kind of shaken that. So, um, you know, again, another popular pick for DFS. A lot of people are on him this week. But Square. as far as a profile, as far as a great ball striker, Drives it well, excellent around the green. That's really going to help him in some of these windier conditions that we might see at Augusta National this year. Uh, I mean, I have nothing bad to say about mm. Hideki other than the ownership. Oh no, too too bad ownership. That's our uh, the only thing bad so far has been ownership. Capper. <laughs> yeah, I mean everything he just said, right? Hideki fits the profile. He's got enough years between his win and now where yes. um, he, he can win. Uh, yeah, and around the green is very, very important here, and he's a master at that. I don't hate it, but you are. I mean, you're probably starting at how every Tom, Dick, and Harry uh, is starting their line. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll take uh, again the pub, the the people, the sheep are following me, Sean. This is a good thing. Who's your second golfer loser? Uh, I'm probably <laughs> changing it right now to get Matsuyama in there. No, 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 no. <laughs> after hearing no, that. No, 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 no. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't need your uh, picks, Ryan. Oh. I do. Uh, I do need this gentleman in my lineup. Very. We haven't talked about him. Uh, he is now playing in his. Uh, let's see. Uh, fifth Masters. Oh, that doesn't fit the three card Monty. No, it doesn't. But he's he's made the cut uh, all all the years, and he's also coming off a top ten Augusta finish. That's usually when you're circling around. You're making a nice little move here. He's only ninety five hundred. A uh, little pricey, but I think he's well worth it. He is from Norway. Give Ooh. me Victor Hovland Victor. for the win. 9,500. A uh, capper. Many are saying this is one of the sharpest DFS plays you can have this week. Do you agree? Well, it's certainly contrarian. Uh, I don't know if it's sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and look, if you're trying to win a million dollars up top, yes. you got to get different. There's a reason nobody's, uh, you know, nobody's really liking him right now. His, his, the form at the beginning of the year, it's like he's a completely different golfer. Um, he has been in absolutely trash form. And as as people say, you don't find your game at Augusta. Uh, and he's just historically terrible around the greens. I know we improved on it last year. But uh, trying to find your form and your weakest part is one of the most important parts of the game. I'm a hard pass on that. Hmm. All oh, that hey, seem good. no risk it, no chicken biscuit, no as they say <laughs> in the Masters DFS world. Steve, very uh, sharp play, most are saying. Well, I mean, let's flash, you know, let's rewind the clock to last summer where Hovland was absolutely impeccable with this game. The ball striking was great. And the reason yeah. why he started to do very well at some of these major championships that was holding back is because he started to really improve around the green. And he was definitely the best player on the PGA Tour towards the end of last season. I think you could get him around 15, even lower than that to one to win the Masters, you know, last winter. So what is a guy who's on top of the world and playing great do? Well, you fire your uh, short game coach and you start doing a swing change. And unfortunately, that's really screwed uh, with Victor Hovland so far this year. The short game has gone back and actually gone way the other way. It's now worse than what he was after all those years. And that's really one thing you have to have at Augusta Nationals. You have to have a good short game. And right now he's struggling. I can personally attest to seeing him hit bunker shots a couple of years ago when he was struggling and – it didn't all go all that great to, uh, for him on the practice range. So, listen, it he hasn't played a month. Maybe he reunited with his swing coach and got back some of the fields. But, yeah, it's definitely a low ownership play for Sean. If you're trying to win a million bucks, sure. Yes. Um, but it's 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 definitely risky. <laughs> Uh, see, he didn't say it was bad, Ryan. He said it was risky. You're, you're, you know, you're a bumper bullet over there, Ryan. Oh, just trying it. to get a, trying to get what, like a seven and an eight. Come on, take the bumpers off. Oh, I play for a hundredth place in, in the <laughs> Masters tournament. I know I can't win it. Uh, no, I'm just again, people are following me to the promised land with all this chalk. 
Next, do you want to keep continue? <laughs> yeah, because I feel going, like you're Ryan. not wobbly right now. You're feeling all right. You don't want a little t- standing standing eight count oh, just to I'm make sure great. the blood's flowing. All right. I'm doing great. I did have a situation this morning where I got a little lightheaded. Um, <laughs> just intense stretching. It was it was crazy. Uh, anyway, uh, all right, Sean, I have a yes. question for you. Sure. Over the last four years, did you know that there are only three guys who have finished in the top twenty-five? Every year, every year, Scheffler, Matsuyama, those guys have won the tournament, and the other guy, Shane Lowry. Oh, a fellow I also countryman. Have Shane Lowry. Oh well, we can dosy do this one okay. down the aisle then. Uh, I, I, all I will say the little, the little bit of uh, anytime you listen to people talk about the Masters, they talk about how important it is to know how to play around the course at Augusta. Shane Lowry also. He's from Ireland. I would imagine he's not soft when it comes to bad weather. The price was right. As again, I'm sticking with a lot of the filler here. We might have to scoop the bread uh, to stay under the salary cap. Shane Lowry, uh, Sean, you you can add on to it if you'd like. Eight grand. I mean, I lo- I love Shane Lowry this week. Uh, he fits the ninth Masters appearance, as we all know. He's also got a recent top ten, finished uh, third. In 2022, of course, he did win the uh, British Open back mm. in 2019. So it shows he can come up in big spots and top 20 in par four scoring and par four oh, wow. birdie or better Whoa. this season. Whoa. Which, as golf sharps, we know is important in the master scoring. Uh, also, massive revenge spot as he looks to uh, get revenge for fellow countryman Zach Eady, who <laughs> fell fell victim yeah, to Dan tough Hurley week in for the uh, national Ireland looking for a rebound. <laughs> at, oh, <laughs> Zach uh, Eady, Eady most dunks by an Irishman. Uh, f- that that's going to uh, be unbreakable record. It is an Irish name. <laughs> uh, we can start with Capper here. Capper Shane Lowry. You got to be all in on Lowry this week, right? So I like Lowry. Uh, Ryan's. I like him better in your lineup than Ryan's just because of how Ryan's building. Um, just I mean, he's literally, just, he's taken the most popular pick from each price range so far. Um, but look, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing not to like about Lowry other than his putting, right? His putting is atrocious. It's, it's terrifying. And his Sunday rounds, he's been in position after, after three rounds multiple times this year. And he comes out on Sunday and just went for it. Like, forget about it. It's terrible. Mm. Um, and, you know, look, he is good on par four scoring, but par five scoring is where you make uh, where you make your hay uh, at Augusta. Um, you know, if you take a look over the last couple of years, you see what the par five scores were and where they were uh, in regards to the rest of the field. Um, and typically, in the, at least the top five, I think Reed might have been the outlier on that. Um, but, yeah, look, I like Lowry. Um, his number's good for betting purposes. I think that got steamed already, too. Um, bad weather when he won his British Open. It was trash weather, so yeah, he, he fits that narrative. It's just what can he do on a Sunday? And uh, that putter is, is terrifying. All right. Well, uh, he is Irish, though, so we can be happy about that, right, Sean? Yeah, he's got that going yeah. for him. Steve, how say you? Yeah, I don't really have much to add. I, I would agree with my co-host here. That's probably works better in Sean's lineup uh, than oh, Kramer's gear. You. But yeah, listen, he's been hitting the ball excellent. The last uh, couple of terms, he played really well in the Florida swing. Obviously, has done very well uh, at Augusta National last couple uh, years, and he's pretty good in adverse weather conditions. And we'll at least see that for the first two rounds. Possibly on Sunday, the winds might ramp up a little bit in the afternoon and make it kind of tough, too. So, yeah, I, I got nothing really bad to say about Shane Lowry as far as um, you know his profile heading into Augusta National. All right. So once again, I am uh, not, not a golf uh, handicapper and I'm just, everyone seems to be copying my picks that I made early on Sunday morning. So I I'm obviously was ahead of the market with this ownership. Kramer, what do you like? Uh, what's your next golf? Oh, I'm, a, I'm afraid to say it out loud. Cause I feel like I'm just going to get roasted here um, because once again, I'm dialing up someone who seems to be in pretty good form, at least over the last couple uh Couple tournaments, uh, Mr. Matt Fitzpatrick. I know I'm uh, I'm switching to an Englishman, which hopefully that's not offensive to anyone. Uh, 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 also worth noting that if you just do the uh, odds to uh, DFS salary comparison, that's maybe why I'm landing on so many of these popular guys. Uh, also seems to be a bit of an outlier here, but yeah. And then I so I was doing some research on Matt Fitzpatrick, who again he's uh, I think uh, a fourth and a tenth over the last two two starts, but. What what is this? Uh, what was this controversy about uh, extra weight in the driver? Steve, can you uh, fill me in on what happened there? 
Yeah, so apparently he was uh, using it as a training aid to build uh, <laughs> club head speed, kind of like how you put a donut on a baseball bat, you know, before you get up to the plate there. And he just conveniently forgot that he left these weights in the grips there, and he started driving it really bad. He couldn't figure out what was wrong, and then all of a sudden he realized, oh, my goodness, I let put all these weights in these grips here. And then all of a sudden, he just started driving it really good. And apparently, a lot of his club head speed started going up because he's been hitting a heavier driver for years. Um, you know, as far, as far as the pick goes, uh, you know, another guy who might draw a little bit of ownership. Oh, I, no. I think I think what you want to like about Fitzpatrick this week, though, is, you know, if this was easier scoring conditions, it looked like up until about this week, it's going to be really benign conditions. And I really probably wouldn't like a guy with Fitzpatrick because he's not as good of a ball striker. Uh, you know, he's very inconsistent with his irons in. You know, and that would be a benefit if it was really good scoring conditions there. But, you know, at least with the first couple of days, you know, it's going to be very tough ball striking conditions. And that's going to help a guy like Fitzpatrick. In fact, his best master's finishes have come uh, when it's been pretty difficult scoring conditions in 2016, 2022, and 2023. All of them are very difficult masters as far as the average score. So, um, you know, as, if that's what's going to be uh, at least shaping up with, with the forecast this year, a uh, guy like Fitzpatrick, you know, really good around the green, nail some putts to, you know, save strokes there. I don't mind it. Yeah, like like Steve said, top ten last year and has made eight straight cuts. So as you know, Sean, making yeah. the cut gets you extra scoring opportunities in DFS. Maybe not everyone's been in the streets for as long as we have. <laughs> Seventy nine hundred Matt Fitzpatrick Capper, are you on board? No, I just despise him as a human being, and a golfer. <laughs> so uh, I'll just I'll just I'll just never get. I'll just I'm never on Fitz. He ruined uh, he ruined the Open or the U.S. Open up in Boston. Or a bunch of my brethren thought just because his last name was Fitzpatrick, he was an Irishman, not a dirty Englishman. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, tricky. yeah, it's, it's, un it's unfortunate. I, he's the biggest. I hate. I, I I really can't stand watching him play golf. I don't like his face. I don't like anything about him. I don't like it. So yes, no, I hate the bit. Just not just out of personal reasons. Well, I think some of my best lineups have come when Capper has uh, irrationally <laughs> hated one, at least one of my my golfers. That's Sean, I, yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm I'm a, I'm a sitting on a Chalky River right here oh, with a yeah. delicious lineup. So I'm I'm feeling good about myself. Right Get the now. blackboard out. Ryan's ready to go uh, to work. I, I feel like Lizzo with a fresh pair of yoga <laughs> pants on. Uh, uh, my golfer, he is uh, 7,700. Oh, and. Uh, Every time he has played the Masters, he's had a top ten finish. Now, granted, he's only had one oh. appearance at the Masters, but Sahith Thigala, oh no, is uh, back, coming off his ninth place finish last year. Again, he's in the world. Uh, he ranked fifteenth, uh, <laughs> which again, something you want to look at. Coming in, playing pretty good form. I think overall his game matches up pretty well. Uh, we'll see if the weather uh, shakes him a little bit, but I love what I saw out of him last year in the Masters. I think uh, what's not to like coming back here now. Obviously, you'd love him next year when it's going to be his third Masters appearance. But I still think it's seventy seven hundred dollars. Him making another appearance here, uh, I feel like him top ten, top twenty is is pretty decent. Seventy seven hundred feels like a good price. Steve, how say you on the Gala? I mean, he's he can be a pretty volatile player sometimes, uh, but he has shown a little bit more consistency this year with some really good finishes. And you know, there's a couple things going for Tagala ahead of this Masters. You know, so he did very well at Kapalua back in January. That has a lot of uneven lies, like there is Augusta National. Uh, typically, guys who do pretty well at Kapalua tend to do well at Augusta National. So you check that box here. Right They're hitting the ball a lot better this year. Uh, the iron play has been pretty good. Some really uh, strong finishes. Uh, at a few tournaments leading into the Masters, pretty good around the green. Although he struggled a little bit in that category this year, but overall his body work, his skill set, he's very good around the green, good putter. Um, you know, if the, if the weather gets a little bit gnarly too, the fact that he's decent uh, getting up and down will help him. Uh, I like Tagala. I think probably more than my co-host does, uh, but you'll you'll get a favorable uh, rating from him on this end. I like this, Sean. He's also in my lineup because I, I don't think Ooh. you realize this local, relatively local kid from Orange County uh, went to college at Pepperdine where he was an all American. Uh, I assume that's part of the reason you picked him here. Yes. Uh, we, we love and the Moxie he's performed well in majors in general yeah. uh, over the last year and a half. So uh, let, let's hear Capper try to cut us down because this is another great pick that we uh, teamed up to make. It's not so much that like, uh, I'll cut him down. I just don't like him as much as my co-host. I just think he's only been there one time, and yeah, he top yeah. ten. But he's just he, he is really volatile. And for me, and look, he's fine for DFS. I like I love him for DFS because he he fills it up with birdies, right? Like uh, the par, the pars and bogeys, 
whatever. Like, but he he will he will make you some points, and uh, he's always he's always on the higher end of, of the scoring. So I listen. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm just kind of, I've always kind of been like I don't know. I feel like the hype is almost unjustified. The tournament he won was trashy, and I don't know. It's uh, he's nice. he's seventy seven hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Well, no, no. So, like, in the, so as far as like, yeah, oh yeah, he's definitely a popular. All right, he's he's going to be popular at DFS because oh, his no. skill set, because his skill set fits. It's just, I personally, I'm not on the hype train, but I'm contrarian, just be contrarian most of the time. So yeah, uh, sh- I, I'd Chef? like I'd like someone to tell me if I, I might have the uh, the optimal lineup this weekend. Based, based you might have a 230 percent overshoot cumulatively. <laughs> I might have the optimal lineup from what I'm hearing. So uh, far. Shout out to uh, EB Steelers in the chat. Said uh, normally, <laughs> normally he listens on 1.7 speed. You guys sound <laughs> drunk and slow at normal speed. He also says he's all in on Tiger, uh, Big Dog Woods, rolling with the guy oh, with wow. the. He said he's rolling with the guy with the biggest hog. So who's that? Uh, Tiger Woods, oh. according to this, uh, the guy in the chat. So. I, you haven't heard the stories about Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, you, are we just assuming Phil Mickelson can't swing <laughs> swing his weight? No, he hits bombs. He doesn't <laughs> carry bombs. It's hard to after reading the Billy Walters book. It's hard to ever uh, root for Phil Mickelson. Seems like a seems like kind of a prick. Uh, I mean, I'm sure most of these guys are, but reading the Billy Walters book, <laughs> kind uh, of a prick. Not really. Uh, not really makes you uh, high on Phil Mickelson. You were really into that endearing social media character he had created. No, I mean, it was funny that you know he's. He was, I'm Phil Mickelson and I'm hitting bombs. He's still got it in counting uh, endorsements and like you know KPMG was still endorsing him after he was like in trouble for. Uh, insider trading, <laughs> money laundering. <laughs> like, the uh, no, I'm not. It's just funny <laughs> that they still sponsored him. Yeah. Uh, oh, they don't give a shit. All right. I got two offers left. What do you have, Ryan? You have, I have one? one. All right. So I'll just go again. Uh, this gentleman fits the system, oh, aka boy. he is making his seventh Masters appearance. Love me some Corey Connors at 7,500. Uh, good value play. He's from Canada. Clean oh, cut. Boy. Uh, Just like Zach Eady. Uh, and he, he had a four under 68 in the final round of the Valero coming in with a little heat. How say you, uh, Steve, on uh, Corey Connors this week? Well, I mean, as you just pointed out, Corey Connors making his seventh Masters appearance pretty good at Augusta National, too. Uh, yeah. You know, a bunch of top 20 finishes. The only issue I see with Corey Connors is while he is a great ball striker, he is absolutely garbage around the green with the putter. And if he is a little bit off, especially with some of these windy conditions, um, that's going to make it kind of a long day for him. Uh, at least on Thursday, Friday, I do have a little bit of concern about him making the weekend if he can't get that ball strike and really go in for him. But if he can, the weather kind of lets up a little bit over the weekend. Maybe he can make a little bit of a charge up the leaderboard because he does hit it pretty good there. But I would be a little concerned about him uh, maybe struggling to get out of the gates a little bit uh, with some bad weather. Yeah, and he does have a – he do, he also has the pedigree. I mean, he has a top 10 finish as recent as 2022 where he got six. So I, I think he's going to be hanging around, pretty good at making cuts. Uh, Capper, how see you and Corey Connors this week? Yeah, I like Corey Connors. I think I said it last week. Like he's an auto auto top twenty bet for me at Augusta. Um, he he just really excels here, right? So it, it, he he's known as a terrible putter too. He, for whatever reason, he can putt on these complex greens. Like Steve said, he's a, he's a ball striker. And yeah, for whatever reason, he really loves this place. And of course, of course, history is very very sticky. He's right about the weather. It makes me a little worried. But uh, I mean, as far as where the price range you're at, I'm, I'm fine with Connors. Oh, but he's fine with Connor. Oh, that come on, that, come uh, on! He said he was an auto play top twenty. That's a uh, win. Yeah. I ever heard it. That feels nice. I'm counting it. All right, <laughs> Kramer, last golfer, make or break it. All right, so I I was trying to avoid the live, um, but then I saw my guy. He's become my guy again. Maybe someone I, as I've fallen into golf YouTube. I've really started to learn things about golfers. Like for one, Bryson DeChambeau is not actually trying to win golf events anymore. Really? He's trying to build a YouTube channel. From what I can tell, it's out of control. He's more concerned about doing a good, good video than he is uh, playing in real golf events. What's up brothers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that might be something. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, but another guy that I've uh, in- enjoyed and I want, I don't think he's soft based on the couple interviews I've watched, but Patrick Reed, 
uh, seems like he's a real son of a bitch. And so <laughs> in a, in a situation where like he seems to rock a chip on his shoulder at all times. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I found myself sitting with exactly 7,500. I didn't want to take the Canadian Connors cause I figured that would be a chalky play. And so I went down to the live guy, Patrick Reed, 7,400. He's 65 to one. That I think. is a disgusting act. I think when I was making my notes, which again, seemed a little out of whack with the price. What are we, what are we thinking about? Uh, live golf tour professional Patrick Reed. Yeah, we go first, Capper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I'm gonna so, <laughs> no, wait, no, wait, no, I, I just, I'm not going to. Just real quick, this reminded me of when I would get in trouble, and my parents would decide, like, all right, who's going to start off? You're, you're about to get it from both of us. No, I, I, I'm not going to really pile on too much on Kramer here. So, oh, so you he's, know, he's starting out as the good cop. Okay. So for most of the live year, he has not been very good. He was really struggling, especially with some of the ball striking stats. I mean, he's never always been the best ball striker. He's always been kind of getting up and down. That's been saving him. But just really uninspiring performances uh, on live so far this year. But, you know, one thing about these live guys, they're desperate for world ranking points. And so he ended up playing a tournament, I think in Macaw. A couple weeks ago in China, and he had finishing, I think, top five there. Comes to live to Raul place. He has won before, hit the ball pretty good, and had a pretty good showing there. So maybe start to round into form a little bit of the Gus National as far as this place. He's really good here. Um, he's got a lot of experience. He knows where to miss it in case, you know, the ball string is a little loose. He can get up and down. I think in bad weather the first couple of days, that's going to help him too. So uh, I don't really like, I, I don't really mind Patrick Reed. Typically sometimes his ownership can be a little suppressed because people just don't like him yeah. it just as a personality. So uh, I'm fine with playing him this week. Well, so I, I did, I did kind of find, I, I wanted to make sure I got either him or Cam Smith in here just because of how well they played at the masters recently. But yeah, I like that felt like a positive thing about Patrick Reed. I gotta be honest. K a capper? Yeah, look, I mean everything he says, right? But I mean, I was just looking at your lineup really quick. Yeah. I mean, my, my guess is your total ownership is gonna come in somewhere between like hundred and ten and hundred and thirty percent. That is that, that that's good, right? That's greater than a hundred. That is not that is that is that is not good. That is not good. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, I, I like this. I'm still gonna smash Sean. So again, lots of people are copying my lineup because it's really good. Including those filthy optimizers, they're probably loving my line. Uh, this gentleman is. Uh, I, I feel positive right now. I didn't get one. That's a horrible fucking pick. Oh, other yeah, than because Matt Fitzpatrick. Uh, other than that, you just took the most popular picks in every sort of price range. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, yeah, come on. I, I mean, carefully crafted a lineup filled with great angles I think and the perspectives. Chiefs will win the Super Bowl this year. Oh well, that would have been right <laughs> last year. Yeah, who cares? It's <laughs> not about being right. It's about being cool and sharp and okay, going against yeah. the grain. Sorry, uh, giving yeah. people winners they don't see coming. Finish Ryan. out your lineup with a nice six point two k. Oh no, I, Ryan! I actually have oh, seven point okay. one k available, oh, okay. mm. and uh, I'm going with uh, Siwoo Kim, as we know. Oh wow! <laughs> as we know, Siwoo has been putting on an absolute ball striking display over the last two months. He is gaining strokes both off the tee and on the approach in buckets this stretch. Siwoo should be very confident heading into Augusta. He played well here before and is clearly in great form. I'm reading that verbatim from Matt Gannon over on SportsGivenPodcast.com. <laughs> Uh, check out his DFS article. <laughs> Steve, Steve does not approve. Steve, <laughs> you're anti Siwoo this week. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be DFS idol if you didn't pick Siwoo Kim. I'm pretty sure <laughs> every DFS idol I've been on, you have picked Siwoo Kim. Maybe just because you like the name. Or so. well, but I I, 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 I took Tommy Fleetwood out of the lineup for you, Steve. All right, that's probably a good thing. I'm glad you went to rehab for Fleetwood. But, you know, I mean, listen, everything you just said is correct. He's been hitting the ball extremely well, and the putter has not been all that good for him. But he's had a lot of really solid finishes uh, at Augusta National. Nothing really too splashy. He's never been in the top 10, but a bunch of top 30, top 20 finishes. And, um, you know, he's drawing popularity probably because of the course, uh, you know, the course fit there and the fact he's hitting the ball good. But, um, you know, I mean, as far as, being a good ball striker, really good around the green, knows his way around uh, Augusta National. And I mean, I, I can't really hate on the pick. Oh wow! We're yeah, getting, I, we're, getting, we're getting pretty. I love good. it. I love Siwoo. I love Siwoo. The only thing that's troubling is his best putting performance in Augusta is when he broke his putter and then putted with his <laughs> five wood for the next five holes. That's um, fun. Yeah, I had money on him. That was super not stressful. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I look, he's like Steve said, he's a, he's a ball striker. He's, he's fun to watch. You know, I think his wife actually might be a better golfer. Isn't that right, Steve? I don't know who he's married to, so you would tell me. Oh. Yeah, he's married to he's married to he's married to uh, a professional uh, women's golfer. Uh-huh. Oh, I, I didn't know Capper did. Uh, he he uh, went the lady tour too. The wags, man. Gotta... When is the uh, uh, lady masters? When does that tee off? They don't... Does the LPGA? Well, they, they, well, they, well, they had the well, they had the women's amateur uh, oh, last week, and there was one yeah. by uh, you know. FSU uh, alum there, which uh, you know Capper probably liked there, but uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's the only time uh, they let women on. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. 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 I, mean, I think I know uh, they they're not uh, not uh, they're they're just they're they're slowly. Uh, oh, changing, listen, get off, the off their times. back. They let the, the blacks in like ten years ago. <laughs> Tell me it's a tiger. I mean, come on. I'm just kidding. It's they call it disgusted for distant different reasons. Uh, all right. Uh, hey, we got uh, so those are the DFS idol, and uh, we got our best bets. Maybe put together a couple uh, under underdog. Uh, sure, what's the, for well, the first hold on. Round. What are we betting? What's the wager on our lineups? Oh, okay. Head side, to head score. side bet. Yeah, I got it written down. Oh yeah, Capper's gonna track it for us. Although I, I think this <laughs> uh, is big Cap enough. Cap a no, We'll but get we'll get we some do, graphics made. We do. Uh, I <laughs> we need a running diary. I know you guys can't tweet live from it, but I need updates on Boston Capper throughout the, the uh, trip. Uh, Steve, I, I know you're not a big X guy, but text updates to yeah. uh, producer cam when whatever's available. easiest. Yeah, we need a, we need a cap, a tracker uh, for uh-huh. off the, uh, when he's not actually on the course, I gotta know what he's up to when he's down there. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kramer, while we think of uh, you think of uh, what you want for the bet, and I'm going to give a shout out to unified healing. That's right. Whether you're a world-class athlete or a podcaster like me, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being, proper recovery for top-notch performance. Imagine you're out there in the Masters, four rounds back to back to back. You need to be on your best physically, mentally, locked in, dialed in, laser focused. That's why it's awesome. Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of uh, the Masters preview again. You know, get get your best. Physically, mentally, Unified Healing is a new, super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by the Energy Enhancement System or EE System. If you haven't heard of it, uh, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, rejuvenation. Whether you're here in LA or hundreds of other locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. Again, uh, head over to uh, unifiedhealing.com that's u n i f y d healing.com slash s g p n to check out the ee system technology for yourself uh no material or testimonials on the unified healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or substitute for professional medical advice diagnosis or treatment always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen including ee system Kramer, what are we uh, what are we putting on our uh, little side what, bed here? Uh, I don't know. What do you want to do? What do we want to do? I just feel. I mean, I I'm fine with just some straight cash, you know. Cash. Just to put a little. St- I want people to understand that this that I'm winning. I've right. beaten you the last. I'm Capper. Well, how, when's again. the last time Sean's even beaten? But that's Sean's won cool. once. <laughs> again, I am I am I am playing this like the Millie Maker it is, right? I'm not trying. Okay. You're you're building a cash game lineup for a GPP oh, entry. Here we go. Uh, that's just it's just poor form. But I, I'll put up a uh, two hundred bucks head to head. Okay, done. All right, there you that's go. That's easy, easy. Yes, cash it. I, I, you've only won once. You, you aka I'm so do. You should be plus five hundred. I, I should have to. I should have to five to one. You right, anyway. Uh, all right, and let's hop into the best bets for us. Also, let's do a. Uh, Let's do a quick uh, underdog pick them. They have a ton of uh, stuff up for the first round. A lot of it is uh, first round related. Steve, I know you uh, you liked lower uh, Tiger Woods birdies. That's now set at three over on underdog. Do you like it at three? I mean, it seems like that might be just like a push at that point. But okay, yeah, uh, well, I mean, that's uh, not bad. Uh, is there uh, <laughs> is there something you like better for maybe round one? A lot of these. Guys, you have like the uh, leader position, um, you know, pretty much anything you can imagine. I mean, they have yeah. all the they have putts. They have uh, well. I mean, golf's getting uh, getting fun with these. 
Well, we can pick out a couple old guys. Uh, yeah, I put okay. in one earlier that I'm actually going to do a video on. No spoiler, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll still share it here. But uh, so I, I think that you know, regardless of when round one happens, it's going to be really tough scoring conditions. I would expect the average score to be 74, 70 half. And currently, right now, uh, they have Phil Mickelson. Uh, his yes. uh, round set at 74 and a half. I like higher on that. Yes, he's okay. been really good at Augusta National, but he is a deficient golfer at this point. He basically would be shooting you know, average, of course. So take higher than that. And then uh, Kramer's boy, Freddie Couples, is at 76 and a half. And I understand he's been around the block at Augusta National, but he is 64 years old with a bad back at this point. Uh, Him shooting plus four or better on Thursday or Friday, whenever that first round is going to happen, seems like a tough stretch. I like higher on that too. Yeah. All right. Capper, you want to throw one in to get, to get a three pick entry? You can give me a couple options. They took away the pick them side from me down here. Okay, just just give me, give me, who do you like in the first round? Yeah. What do you, is there a guy See, you like? Let's go with what's See, Rory's birdies at. See, Steve took that. Ooh. Rory birdies is at three and a half. I like the over. Higher. Higher. Yeah. All right. Yep. So we got uh, Phil Mickelson higher, 74 and a half stroke. <laughs> Freddie Couples higher. 76 and a half strokes and Rory McElroy higher three and a half birdies that pays uh 6.31. Uh, so nice little, uh, pick em entry over there. Underdog fantasy promo code S G P N get you the hundred percent deposit bonus. Uh, come on, get in over there. Kramer. What do you like, uh, for the, uh, bets itself? I'll throw out some, uh, we didn't talk about them at all. <laughs> But uh, CJ, aka the man in the box, said oh. he's playing really well, and it's a throwback, Ryan, to the uh, first major bet we ever got correct on the sports gambling podcast. Give me Bubba Watson. Wow, that bring it first back. round leader, hundred to one. Bubba Watson to win it all, three hundred to one. Again, that's <laughs> oh, Steve, no, I'm they, laughing. Oh, Steve's no, expression they... is crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna take out Tiger Woods first round leader, <laughs> seventy to one. That doesn't feel fun anymore. Oh, you, guys were, uh, <laughs> you guys were mean about it. Uh, no, he just, he cost me money last week at Liv Durrell. He played really well in the first round and then he sucked. I just need him to finish top 20 in a 54 feet, man field with a bunch of bums that are the back. He couldn't even do that. So I'm just a little jaded up at this point. You catch me at the wrong, wrong time. <laughs> don't apologize. Uh, I don't know. It, we do we we didn't really talk about him uh, in the DFS idol. Where are you guys at with Joaquin Neiman at thirty to one? Do we like him? Uh, so yeah, I, so yeah, yeah, we love we love him. Unfortunately, yeah. So I there's a lot of things going for Joaquin Neiman that you know would be really good for this. Obviously, playing really good on live, but. Uh, you know, loss in a playoff at Kapalua. I mentioned that earlier. That's a uh, indicator for success at Augusta National. One at Riviera. That's another cross course comp there too. And you know, he's picked up a lot of distance off the tee. Um, you know, sometimes when we look at these master winners, it just seems so blatantly obvious when we're arm check quarterback back at the end. And it, it would be very obvious. You know, why can't you be like, oh, of course, of course, he's been playing great. Of course, he wins the Masters. He's been pretty good at Augusta National too. Um, there is a certain guy in the industry who uh, tends to be famously wrong. Yeah. Uh, a lot, and he he, uh, he <laughs> likes like? Joaquin Neiman this week. Oh, so, no. uh, <laughs> that was a bucket of cold water on some fiery text messages I had back with uh, my co-host now yesterday, and uh, yeah, it all went kaput. When I heard yeah, because I got him, I got him at sixty to one a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and all he's, right, so he's down at like twenty. Now. I'll roll with a Joaquin at thirty to one. Uh, then probably my favorite one is Shane Lowry, sixty to one. And then, uh, like I said, Bubba Watson, 300 to one, but Bubba Watson, first round leader, hundred to one. So I'm just going to take three golfers to win it all. And then Bubba Watson, first round leader, got my underdog entry, got my uh, DFS entry. I feel like I'm uh, ready to go. Kramer. I would like to report that I, um, I, while I did invest in the underdog entry with cappers contribution, I did just learn about the underdog limit with Steve's contribution. I did the two legs, Sean, you know what the max is on underdog for a two leg, uh, 500. So I got couples and uh, Mickelson both to go higher. Uh, a little, oh, little, nice. little, little limit play. Uh, oh my God. Well, I, I'm going to have some fun. Cause I also, uh, I have Justin Thomas from months ago at plus uh, 2,500. 
You can get them at 45 to one now. So uh, <laughs> some negative CLV for me, uh, perhaps the opposite of my DFS lineup. All right. Also going to take to win. Uh, we have Brooks Kepka, Xander, and uh, I took a long shot on uh, Lowry and Patrick Reed. And you know what, Sean, you liked Corey Connor, so I'll throw him in there too. Those guys are all sixty. You know, to one. yeah, I'll I'll add Corey Connor. So Xander, to Xander, fifteen to one. Brooks, seventeen to one. Corey Connors and Shane Lowry, sixty to one each, and Patrick Reed, seventy to one. And then I have a top ten. For Brooks, top ten for Xander plus one. Uh, Brooks's price is plus not one ninety on the top ten. Xander plus one forty. Although uh, Steve said some things that made me want to delete that bet. Uh, uh, the, and then, um, as you mentioned, Capper, uh, when when Capper said, "Well, he's an auto top twenty, uh, that that triggered me and got me to add on uh, Corey Connors top twenty at plus one eighty. We also added a Patrick Reed top twenty at two to one, and we added the uh, Shane Lowry top twenty at plus one fifty. Mm. You're jacked up. You got a lot going, Kramer. Uh, uh, too much stuff, and I'm going to continue <laughs> to add stuff because uh, it, it's they continue to make it easier and easier with these beautiful tables where I just have to click the buttons that I want. It's like <laughs> horse betting. I just no, just underdogs me- going to be so fun to fire on for these. Uh, for round two, three, four. So get in over there if you haven't already. Uh, Steve, I know you and Capper, you guys got your best bets with Andy Lack episode uh, dropping later this evening. Make sure you get that over uh, Golf Gambling Podcast YouTube, wherever you get your Golf Gambling Podcast. But uh, give give the folks a little preview. What are some uh, couple picks you like uh, so far? I know you gave out the the Woods Master bet, but uh, anything live that you're going to toss out now, Steve? Yeah, so I mean, I, I agree with a couple uh, with the top twenty uh, that Kramer has. I, I also have Shane Lowry top twenty uh, plus one fifty. I just like how he's been hitting the ball, his form at Augusta National, and with some of the bad weather, I feel like it's going to happen in this yes. tournament. I think that's going to be good for him. Um, Matt Fitzpatrick top twenty plus one thirty as well. I feel like again, you know, in bad weather, uh, in you know adverse weather conditions, he can do pretty well there. Uh, and a couple top forty guys, uh, I like that you may you know the pricing is not all that great for this week because there's only nine eighty nine guys. But you know, you can get plus one ten on a top forty. You know, you don't even have to, you know, being only about half the field. There on Taylor Moore, this guy I like down the mm-hmm. card, and Steven Yeager, who won the Houston Open with uh, some simulated Augusta National conditions. You get plus one ten on those guys. Uh, those are two top forty bets that I have in my card this week. Well, and how many people make the cut? So top fifty in ties. So oh, if wow. you make the cut, you have a great chance of cashing that top forty. Oh, all right. Oh, nice. Uh, I, see, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to, I locked in a card and now it's already starting to mentally change. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know. And, and now that There's I realize, so many well, I also put so much on this Freddie couples, <laughs> Phil Mickelson now that it's going to be like the UFL. Uh, just it's going to make the first round electric. And I know they're not going to show me these guys. So I got to figure out the fucking, they'll show you Phil. They'll absolutely show you Phil. But oh, okay. isn't there, what's the weird uh, TV restrictions? Oh, on the, fucking or, you gotta watch it on the app. It's the best app in, the, in, in golf. You can watch every shot from every player. Um, it's, it's the best app in golf. Just download the app. You'll be fine. Yep. Yeah. Oh, all right. Nice uh, plug. Nice yeah. Plug. Yeah. Apparently masters is a sponsor. Uh, oh, they're getting <laughs> down there, you know, showing them the course. That's why oh, they don't yeah. want to say anything mean. Yeah. Uh, Capper masters, a uh, couple, a couple masters plays, uh, tickle all right, I'll give you a couple appetizers. All right. I'll give you a couple. So I'll give you some nationality ones. So, uh, see who can top South Korean is two to one. Uh, he's basically oh, going to be, he's going to beat Sanjay who is in absolutely abysmal form, but he does have a good history here. I tested Steve about it. So it feels like, feels like a steal, which means it's a sucker bet. It's probably going to fucking lose. But I'm still going to do it. Two to one. Uh, see who can real quick. What's it yeah. now? I know they have top Asian. Do you like him in top Asian or just top no, South Korean? Top South Korean. Top South Korean only. And then uh, I like uh, for top Scandinavian, uh, Theon Born Olsen. Oh, and uh, he is uh, he is he is he's in really good form. He's got a pretty decent finish here before. And other than Vic Hovland, who I have no faith in, uh, he's not a whole bunch of there. And it's six to one uh, for nationality, where the guy is playing pretty well with a okay history here. I'll take six to one on. On throwing board all day. Love it. Yes, more uh, 
more uh, racially charged bets. Uh, <laughs> I like it's, it's gambling is the only thing where you can. Yeah, it's yeah, just you can such discuss. a funny to see. It's just so funny to see top Asian as well, a, as something you can bet. Yeah, on. I, yeah I've been in the Discord a bunch. You hop to golf. You see these types of bets where they're 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 just creating these narrow uh, sectors of national. And then you hop over to the 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 crypto channel and people are discussing the political markets. No <laughs> anger. No, no rage, just bets. Just bets. Just bets. Bets can heal the world. Yep. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for coming on. Uh, again, make sure if you haven't already, sportsgamepodcast.com slash masters. Get in uh, for the chance to win the Taylor made Spider X putter. Steve, you said you've tried it out and you you think it's a pretty sweet putter? Yeah, I just well, I was at a PG Tour Superstore uh, a couple weeks ago when I was down in Florida visiting my parents and I, I found the putter that Scotty Scheffler is currently using. I'm like, all right, why don't I see if this actually helps me? And I, Probably only missed like maybe two or three uh, 10 footers that I just put you know, on the practice screen there. It really does. Uh, it really is a cheat code, which is absolutely terrifying to put in the hands of the best ball striker of the world at this point. So, uh, but if it can help me, if it can help Scotty Scheffler, it can definitely help you. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So I guess I'll have to enter because I, I have noticed my game, I would be uh, doing a lot better if it wasn't for that filthy putting. Yeah. If you sink all your putts, it does help you. Nothing uh, like uh, having a good hole and hit three putting. <laughs> Uh, make sure you guys right. give him a follow on X at Golf Gambling Pod. Again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get in. Uh, they got the best bets episode coming up tonight. Bunch of other Masters content already available over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green. He's Ryan. Uh, enjoy Augusta, guys. Kramer, let it ride.